But if you will listen to the shepherd and lie down and rest, have a quiet time with God, you will be healthier, you'll be more mature, you'll even be more productive, you will be blessed, you'll feel better spiritually and physically and emotionally, you will be better off if you find time to rest with the Good Shepherd, amen. Thank you for joining me here today on the Lift Up Jesus broadcast. I'm Pastor Dudley Rutherford, and I wanna ask you a question. Could you use some refreshment in your life, some green pastures, some still and quiet waters? Well, on today's program, we're going to be exploring the second verse of Psalm chapter 23, which says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Oh, you will be inspired and encouraged to silence the noise around you and to listen to the shepherd's voice in order to find peace in the midst of this chaotic world. So be sure to get, grab your Bible, your notes, grab a pen, and let's begin our message entitled Green Pastures and quiet waters. We're in a series called The Goat, the greatest of all time. We're looking at what many people call the greatest chapter in the entire Bible. It is said that President Abraham Lincoln read this psalm to cure his blues. If you study Abraham Lincoln, he was depressed a lot. We know that President George Bush proclaimed Psalm 23 publicly to calm our nation's fears after 9-11. I don't know if you know this, but this year is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. I was visiting recently with Greg Laurie of Harvest Church, and I asked him this question. Looking at today, I said, Greg, have you ever seen so many people living in fear. His response was quite interesting. He said, Dudley, I've, I don't re recall our nation ever living, going through a period like this. He said, except 9-11. He said, but back when 9-11 took place, the churches were packed. People fled to church because they knew that we needed God. And he said, during this pandemic, it's very, very strange because we still need God, but the churches are empty. And what I tell you that story is because this psalm that we're looking at, Psalm chapter 23, these six verses, I believe if you study this, that this psalm will calm every fear you are experiencing. And last week we looked at verse 1, the Lord, all caps, which signifies it's Jehovah God, Yahweh God. The psalmist says that the Lord Jehovah God is my shepherd. I shall not want. And what we looked at last week was the truth that if Jesus truly is your shepherd, if you have this relationship with your shepherd, that you have everything that you will ever need. Anytime anyone can say to you, I shall not want, you need to sit up and take notice because we live in a day and an age of discontent. Jason Lehman wrote, it was spring, but what I wanted was summer, warm weather and the great outdoors. When it was summer, what I wanted was the fall. I wanted colorful leaves and cool, dry air. When it was fall, what I wanted was winter. I wanted some beautiful snow in the holiday season. And when it was winter, what I wanted was the spring. I wanted new life and a break from the cold. I was a child, but what I wanted was adulthood. I wanted freedom and independence. When I was, when I was 20, I wanted to be 30. I wanted to be mature and respected. And when I was middle-aged, what I wanted was to be 20 again. I wanted to be young and unencumbered. 
And when I was retired, what I wanted was to be middle-aged because time was flying too quickly. And then when my life was over, I realized I never, ever got what I wanted. There's a cemetery in England with an inscription. It reads, she died of want of things. And alongside that gravestone was another gravestone that read, he died trying to give them to her. (laughs) Psalm chapter 23, verse 1, last week, and we learned that if you can say that the Lord is my shepherd, deep down in your heart, if you can say that, then he and he alone will satisfy the longings of your heart. That's verse 1. Today, we want to graze over to verse 2 as sheep. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, hey, we're going to graze over to verse 2. Can you say that to your neighbor? Come on, say it. Last week, I had you say, bah. Okay, so this week, we're going to graze over to verse 2. This psalm, God portrays himself as a shepherd and pictures us as sheep. And in that shepherd-sheep relationship, we understand as we look at verse 2 that only, only if we are in a relationship with Jesus, I want you to look at verse 2. It reads that He, God, will make us lie down in what's called green pastures, and He will lead us beside quiet waters. Now, in your Bible, if you have your Bible, I want you to circle those two phrases, the fact that he makes me and he leads me. Sometimes God makes me do things, and sometimes God leads me to do things, and those are two different things altogether. You see, sometimes God forces things upon us, and some things he leads us, and we just easily go along. There are some things I probably wouldn't do unless God didn't corral me into doing them. And sometimes, or otherwise, I'm I'm likely to do some things. I'm just say, okay, God, I'll go along with the flow. And I would say for everyone in this room, there are times where we say, God, I'm I'm along for the ride. And there's other times that we say, God, I know that's what you want me to do, but I'm not going to do it. I... I know that's what the Bible says, but I'm not going to live like that. And God says, we'll see about that. (laughs) I want to quickly remind you that the good shepherd always knows what we need. We don't always know what we need, but God always knows what we need. And in his heart, his heart is to feed you and to guide you and to protect you. The only dilemma that's left is, are you willing to trust him? Are you willing to do what he asks you or directs you to do? That's the issue. We come to verse 2, and it's talking about a lot of things, but I believe there are three major things that that all sheep, if you're a a believer and Jesus is your shepherd, three things that you always need. Number one, write this down, is to rely on the shepherd's provisions. To rely on the shepherd's provision. There are many things that God will provide for you as your shepherd. Amen? Now, the text, usually you find two things, and there's, there's actually three if you look at it closely. I want you to write this down. He gives you food, he gives you water, and he gives you rest. Food, water, and rest. What else do you need? Besides food, water, and rest, it's interesting that most of us know that we need food, and we're pretty good at finding it. You ever think about how just every day we're all pretty good at finding something to eat? How many of you, you're you're going to eat today? You're like, you, you know how to do that, and God provides all that food for us. We know that we need water. You can't exist without it. And we're blessed here in the United States of America to have a lot of water. And it's just over there at the tap. And uh, we're just blessed. God knows we need that. He provides it for us. But did you know that God also, besides the basics of food and water, that God desires for every one of us to find rest? 
It's interesting that sheep over in the Middle East, they get up at four o'clock in the morning. Sheep are early risers. They don't like to eat when it's hot outside, so they get up really early and they start to eat when it's cool, plus there's dew on the grass, so it's a two for one. Sheep cannot eat while they're hot and they can't drink when their stomachs are full of undigested grass. So they get up early, they eat, and around 10 or 11 o'clock, when it starts to get hot, the shepherd is looking for some green pastures or some green grass, and he leads them over there and he forces them to lie down for three or four hours, and he lets them ruminate or chew the cud and to rest, because the shepherd knows that in rest, that they grow the fastest, that they put on some weight, that they, their wool is easily added. They are they're healthiest when they're resting. So I want you to write this down. The shepherd forces them to rest because it's for their best. He forces them to rest because it's for their best. We learned last week that sheep are not very smart. You've never gone to a circus and seen the trained sheep. <laughs> oh, there, there are horses there that they have trained, and there are lions there that they have trained, and tigers that they have trained. They even train large elephants. They can even train a snake. But you don't go to a circus and see a trained sheep. They're untrainable. They're also directionless. They get lost easily. They just wander off. They're easy prey. Uh, for the, uh, in the wild, for all the beasts that are out there. They, they have to rely upon the shepherd to find them food, to find them water. But at certain times, he forces them to lie down because it's in their best interest. I want to encourage you today, if anyone here is struggling, if anyone here is depressed or discouraged, you're tired, or you feel lost, you just feel like you're just wandering around, you need to come to Jesus, and he will give you some spiritual food right here. This is what you need to be chewing on. And he'll give you something to drink, which is spiritual water, which is symbolic of the Holy Spirit of God. And once you taste of the living water, you will never thirst again. And it's why it's important, and I know I'm preaching to the choir because the choir's right here, but it's why you need to be in church. It's why you need to be, to be in a life group. It's why you need to spend time in the Word of God. You need to let God's Word and God's Spirit lead you because He will lead you to a place of rest. The problem is we're all running 100 miles an hour in 100 different directions. We don't have time for God. We can't find time in a 24-hour day period to spend time in the Word of God. We're too busy, we're too stressed, we're too consumed with the things that are not important. And God will eventually come along and he will make you, yes, force you into a situation where you must turn to him and you must rest. And he has a thousand ways to do that. I found this version of Psalm 23. I don't know who wrote it, but I want to read it to you. It reads, the clock is my dictator, I shall not rest. It makes me lie down only when exhausted. It leads me into deep depression, it hounds my soul. It leads me into circles of frenzy for activity sake. And even though I run frantically from task to task, I will never get it all done, for my idea is always with me. Deadlines and my need for approval, they drive me. They demand performance from me beyond the limits of my schedule. They anoint my head with migraines. My in basket overflows. Surely fatigue and pressure shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the bonds of frustration forever and forever. Oh, we need to rest. The Bible, the God we know, created the world God gives you he just gives you 168 hours every single week of your life surely we can find one day out of seven 
and put everything else aside and come to the house of God and open up our Bibles and begin to study and see what God's plan is for our life. Surely in a 24 hour day period, you could find two, three, four, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 or 30 to read God's word. Burning the candles at both ends is not a badge of honor, it's a mistake. But if you will listen to the shepherd and lie down and rest, have a quiet time with God, you will be healthier, you'll be more mature, you'll even be more productive, you will be blessed, you'll feel better spiritually and physically and emotionally, you will be better off if you find time to rest with the good shepherd, amen. Number two, number two. We all of us need to rest in the shepherd's presence. Everybody say presence. We need to just rest in the shepherd's presence. This is probably one of the most important lessons in this entire series that that we're going through this book. There is a theme that is interwoven throughout these six verses, and I've not gone into great detail, but I'm going to find a weekend where I show you that What we see in every verse is Jehovah God, the Jehovah God that is provider. He is a sustainer. He is a protector. He is a healer. He is an overseer. And in all those things where he provides, where he sustains, where he protects, where he heals, where he watches over us, all of those things are found when you're in the presence of the shepherd. Sheep have four major issues that keep them from lying down. If you ever see sheep and they're standing, they, they can't lie down because of four reasons. Number one, they are fearful creatures by nature. They're nervous, they're fearful, they can't relax. They can't lie down. That's why he has to make them lie down. A jackrabbit, a jackrabbit, Jumping out from beneath a bush or a shrub can startle an entire flock of sheep and cause them to stampede running because they're scared of a jackrabbit. Who does that remind you of? That's us. We are scared out of our minds right now. We're afra- Everywhere I go, people are afraid of getting sick, afraid of not having enough resources afraid that our children are not doing okay, afraid that our parents are getting older. We're afraid that the schools are closed. And guess what? When the schools reopen, we'll be afraid. We're afraid of the government. We're afraid of our culture. We're just like sheep. We can't rest. Why? Because we're always afraid. Secondly, sheep are fraught with friction. There's just always something going on in that herd. Uh, You've heard of the pecking order? That's kind of a phrase for birth. There's a budding order with sheep. There's always, if you look, there's one sheep that just, he's kind of butting his way in there, just stirring up the, the flock. And they can't rest because there's always someone jockeying for position there in the flock. And and they, so they have to remain on guard. They, they have to remain on high alert unless they've got to fight back. Uh, they're, God's, they can't rest unless there's unity in the flock. That's us. We're all just fighting with each other. The news, the media, everyone calling everyone else a racist. The left versus the right. Liberals versus conservatives. There's friction. We don't get along. That's who we are. We're fraught with friction. And, and until, until we learn how to get along with each other, we will never be at peace. We'll never be at peace. We'll never know true rest. Number three, these sheep were fluffy with fleas. Did you know that sheep are in constant danger from parasites and flies and gnats and disease? And you know, that's us. We have all kinds of bugs and parasites that make us unhealthy that keep us from finding true rest. You say, like what? Well, 
unforgiveness, bitterness, shame, guilt, regret, resentment, sin, our carnal nature, complaining, arguing, blaming. And Jesus, the great shepherd, is constantly trying to get us into the Word and via the Holy Spirit to deal with all of those issues that are eating away at us, both biblically and truthfully. And number four, sheep are what I call famine fighters. They're always, if you look at them, they're always looking for something to eat, foraging for food. And you know, they find a few weeds and they kind of put their nose down on the ground, they chew away, and they just keep nibbling, and, pretty, and, and, and they just wander off, and they, might, they, can't see, they can't see very well. And so they, they might just be walking right by some, some green pasture. They don't even see it because they're so busy in the weeds. They, they miss out on the good stuff. And that's us. We're chasing after all the things of this world, and one day we wake up and we look around and we're 100 miles from where we should be. And what sheep need and what we need, something that will solve all of our sheep-like tendencies, we need to be in the presence of the shepherd because the shepherd will lead us by green pastures and still waters. You know, I, I actually read this week of another virus that's out there that causes swelling of the brain. And if you get this virus, you have a 75% chance of dying. It makes COVID-19 look like a walk in the park. And if you get wrapped up in all the evil things that in this world, and you're sitting out there just hoping that all of these things go away, I've got news for you. Bad things in this world are never going to go away. You might as well learn this lesson that your best thing you could ever do is to just stay close to the shepherd. That's what you need to do. Because you see, the shepherd is the only one that can calm our fears. The shepherd is the only one that can get us all united here today. The shepherd is the only one that can deal with all the ticks and the parasites, those things that are keeping us from having true rest. And I said all of that to say this, what calms the sheep, write this down, it's not the absence of predators. What calms the sheep is the presence of the shepherd. That's what calms us. I have all these worries and these fears, these things that stress us out. Those things are always going to be here. You're never going to be uh, free of trouble. We live in a fallen world. There, listen, there are too many things for me to even name that cause us harm in this world. Sheep have many fears, just like us. But sheep are smart enough to know at least one thing, and that is that if the shepherd is near, there's no need to fear. Oh, I want you to say that. If the shepherd is near, there's no need to fear. Say that. Say, I want to hear it. Turn to your neighbor and say, if the shepherd is near, there's no need to fear. Say it to your neighbor. Come on, come on, come on. I, I want to be totally honest with you. and Some of you are not going to like what I'm going to say next. I am... Totally, sincerely, I feel sorry for people who've lived in fear these last 12 months. I just look at them and I go like, I, I feel sorry for you. And I don't mean to be disrespectful in any way, shape, or form, but I have not spent two seconds living in fear this last year not two seconds because because i know the shepherd and the shepherd knows me why would i fear and don't don't act like i've got my head buried in the sand there's some really bad things listen i know that politics is bad i know that 
I know that COVID is bad. I know that. Today, we learn that in the hustle and bustle of life, that we have to get to a point where we rely on the shepherd's provision, rest in the shepherd's presence, and be refreshed by the shepherd's peace. There's nothing I like better than sharing God's Word with people, and if you'd like to partner with us, we are always seeking to expand our ministry in order to reach more cities around the United States and the world with the gospel. Please call the number on the bottom of the screen or visit our website, liftupjesus.com, to give a gift of any amount. We truly would appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining me here today, and be sure to come back next week as we take a look at Psalm chapter 23, verse 4, and how God is with us even in the valley. You won't want to miss it, and in the meantime, wherever you're going and whatever it is that you're doing, don't forget to always lift up Jesus. We live in the most distracted culture in the history of the world. We see about 10,000 messages every day. We even touch our phones about 2,000 times a day. We're literally being overwhelmed with information. That's why there's no better time than right now for Dudley Rutherford's remarkable new book, One Thing, Rediscover a Simpler Faith in Our Complicated World. In this timely book, Pastor Dudley invites you to open your Bible and look closely at seven key passages of scripture where you'll find the beautifully uncomplicated phrase, one thing. These scriptures will quiet all the noise that you're hearing and call you back to a simpler faith. Dudley Rutherford has discovered the secret of how to focus our lives on the one thing that matters. What if you could find that simplicity? It's waiting out there, and this is your roadmap to freedom. Contact Lift Up Jesus today and get your copy of One Thing, the book that could finally change everything. Research proves that it's the regular hearing and teaching of the Word of God that takes our Christian life to a new level. That's why we invite you to meet Dudley Rutherford every week on this station for another powerful message straight from the Bible. You can also visit liftupjesus.com to sign up for our monthly email devotional, discover Pastor Dudley's books and other resources, and see our national TV and radio schedule. And don't hesitate to reach out on the phone or online. Pastor Dudley has a passion and vision to reach more people with a message of hope. And if you'd like to partner with us to touch the world, we'd love to hear from you. Your financial gift will do so much to help us impact the nations for Christ. And if you're ever in the Southern California area, we invite you to visit us at Shepherd Church here in Los Angeles. It's an amazing experience you'll never forget. Until next time, remember to always lift up Jesus. Jesus.